Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. So, um, welcome to today's lecture and this is the first part of the history of Hindi cinema. So, as the title itself suggests, I am going to take you down to down a memory lane or down the history of uh, the great tradition of Hindi cinema. The, uh, we will be talking about the major uh, pioneers, the movements, uh, the key figures including actors, cinematographers, music makers, music directors and of course, the greatest Hindi films. Okay, so, I may not be able to cover, let me warn you that I may not be able to cover each and every seminal film, but I would definitely try to summarize the key trends that took, that have taken place and forge the kind of cinema um, that makes us, that makes particularly that informs Hindi cinema today. So, as uh, most of you must be aware of, the first feature film made in India was Raja Harishchandra. This was made in 1913. The film had a running time of approximately 40 minutes and it is one of the many mythologicals that the great Dada Sahib Phalke created in his career. The film focuses on uh, the noble and the great righteous king Harishchandra, who first sacrifices his kingdom and then his family uh, to keep his promise to the sage Vishwamitra. Uh, the, that's the plot. And greatly moved by his sense of ethics, the, um, the gods give him back all he possessed in. Uh, he is rewarded with more, much more than he had lost. The film had an all male cast as respectable women those days would not play the female play leads. So, even male men played female leads here. Okay, women were not available when Palke was making this film. So, he had it was an all male cast and uh, um, he cast a particularly delicate looking boy who used to work in a, res a restaurant as a cook to play the role of Queen Taramati. Now, um, you should also know one thing that uh, Dada Saab Falke was uh, immensely influenced, influenced by Raja, Raja Ravi Verma, the great painters. His style of painting Okay, the film was processed in London because in India they didn't have facilities for doing this kind of work. And uh, Palke's wife Saraswati Bai manually perforated the reels in the night. So it's that kind of work that had gone into making the first ever film in India. The film was premiered on April 21st, 1913, and as expected, was a grand success. This success paved the way for the growth of the Indian film industry. If you want to know more about uh, what went into making this film, the struggle that Dada Sahab Phalke had to put up with, you must watch a recent film, it is a Marathi film, Harish Chandraji Factory, which is directed by Paresh Mokashi, uh, which is Yuchi, which, which you can take as a tribute to Dada Sahab Phalke. Some of the most well known silent films of this period are Kichaka Vadam, Lanka Dehan, Shakuntala, Bhakt Vidur, uh, Bilat Farat, Pati Bhakti, Devdas, and Prem Sanyas. So, you, you may uh, just the titles should be enough to tell you that most of these are mythologicals, and then soon we moved on to tackling love stories. So, we may not have mythological, the tradition uh, has not um, been too successful or sustained at least on screen, but uh, on um, the smaller screen we know the immense popularity of this genre. 
The first Indian sound film was Alam Ara, directed by Ardeshar Irani and was released in 1931. The film is a love story and was very, very uniquely advertised as an all living, breathing, 100 percent talking peak drama, essence of romance, brains and talents unheard of under one banner. So, that was the advertisement. The film consisted of seven songs and the first ever song on the Indian screen was De De Khuda Ke Naam Par. It was sung by actor Wazir Muhammad Khan. Now, since playback singing was still a novel concept in India, the song had to be recorded live with musical, uh, with minimal musical accompaniment. Alamara starred Master Vithal and Zubeda and uh, it also included two greats, that, two future greats, Prithvi Raj Kapoor and L.V. Prasad. Prithvi Raj Kapoor, of course, you know, the great, the, uh, at the head of the great Kapoor dynasty and L.V. Prasad, who went on to become one of the biggest film moguls or film producers of South Indian cinema. Alamara was followed by Shireen Farhad, which was directed by J.J. Madan of Madan Theatres. Now, Shirin Farhad starred Jaha Ara Khajan and Master Nisar and had a record 42 songs. So, 42 songs in one film. The film as, ex as uh, expected was a grand success and music played an important role in its success. A, uh, a significant result of Alamara and Shirin Farhad was uh, that uh, it spelled the doom for the careers of silent film stars. Master Vithal was one of the first to feel the blow. This was mainly because of the lack of fluency in Hindustani language. Hindustani language which um, I do not want to get into too much of a debate on what is Hindustani language, but then it is a mix of uh, um, Hindi, but not the classic kind of a Hindi but it is also a mix of Urdu, Persian and uh, Hindi words and the Hindi language that is the syntax that is the music and rhythm of Hindustani language. And then Master Vithal and many uh, like him stars of great stars of the silent period, they also were not too well versed with histrionics, they, the acting skills were not up to the mark and all these things prevented people like Master Vithal and others from attaining greater heights as talking stars. Many shifted towards regional language films and also uh, many just you know fizzled away, many careers just died out. Another interesting phenomenon related to sound was the decline of several female stars, particularly those with Anglo Indian background. Now, this is uh, worth noting that um, many of female leading actresses, they were from Anglo Indian. Uh, background. They were proficient in dancing, they were uh, relatively um, less inhibited and therefore, um, they sparkled much more on screen. But again, they suffered from the same drawback that is lack of language, fluency in Hindustani language and uh, due to the advent of the talking films, their discomfort with the language proved to be a major hurdle, major obstacle. One of the key actors of this period was um, a lady called Ruby Mears, an Anglo Indian lady, uh, but uh, for uh, cinematic purpose, she changed her name to Sulochana. She was one of the worst hits of this film period. She was of Jewish origin and was particularly known for her dancing abilities and glamorous looks. Um, her career suffered a setback, but then see she was more tenacious of others and uh, she made a comeback after learning the Hindustani language and did very successful films such as Anarkali, Bombay Ki Billi and Indira M.A. Now, coming back to Adeshar Irani. He also made two other significant films. One was Kisan Kanya and it has the distinction of being the first ever color film in 1937. And then he also made a Persian film, a Farsi talkie film called Dukhtar Elar. 
This uh, film is important because an Indian girl was cast in an Iranian film. For Kisan Kanya, Adesha Renani uh, bought the rights to use the cinecolor process from an American company. The film was based on a novel by Sadat Hassan Manto and highlighted the plight of poor farmers. The film was not a great success, all be particularly because of its grim uh, theme, the serious content, because by then the audiences had become more used to the song and dance elements and you know mythologies, love stories. So, Kisan Kanya was mo a more serious kind of a film and it did not go down too well with the audience. Now, the um, first great fem female star of Hindi cinema was Zubeda, who played the female lead in Alamara. She acted with uh, great stars of that period such as Prithvi Raj Kapoor, Master Vittal and Jal Merchant. She played also the leading uh, character, lead role in several mythologies where she was, mythological character, uh, films where she played uh, roles such as Subhadra, Uttara and Draupadi. She played a circus girl in Zarina and later enacted several courtesan roles in period films and also acted in an adaptation of Ravindranath Tagore's work Balidan. Now, the success of all these films, what did they do? They provided us with a template, musical love stories. So, that is something that works and that has continued to work till date. The songs thus found a permanent place in Hindi films. Now, this also led to increase or interest in uh, playback singing. Nitin Bose directed Bengali film. Bhagya Chakra, which was a 1935 film, was the first Indian film to use playback singing. The singers were K. C. De, Parul Ghosh and Suprabha Sarkar. The film was remade in Hindi as Dhup Chhao, which became the first Hindi film to use playback singing. Another landmark film of this period was Dev Das, starring the great singing star K. L. Sagal and also Jamuna and Rajkumari. It is a 1936 film directed by P. C. Baruad. Let us watch a clipping from Devdas with the great Sagal singing a song. Now, here is the link to the YouTube. Another great film of this period and it is also an important film because of the social theme that it touched upon is Achut Kanya. It is one of the first films, earliest films to tackle the theme of untouchability in India, which is a, a very so, uh, serious social problem in many parts of our country. The film starred the great Ashok Kumar and Devi Karani and was directed by Franz Austin, a German film director and has the distinction of having the first female music composer Saraswati Devi. At this point, let me tell you, we have had a very few examples of female music composers. Recently, of late perhaps a few, uh, yeah, the numbers have increased, but um, for a very long time, especially on a Hindi film scene, we had music directors that could be counted on fingers. So, Saraswati Bai, the first ever female music composer. Bombay Talkies was uh, an important, a very important film studio of that time and Ashok Kumar was uh, an employee, that is the way things worked those days. Actors were under contract with certain major powerful studios. The Bombay Talkies is Kismat was one of the most successful, successful films of those time. Uh, it made Ashok Kumar the superstar of Hindi films. I would go as far as calling him the first real superstar of Hindi cinema and he served as a role model for the typical urban suave glib kind of a hero and this is also a template for our heroes. The film also started the lost and found formula as well as the so called double role formula which is still so popular and especially if you look at the films of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. You know, every second film had the lost and found and the double role template. Kismet also had the great 
um, patriotic song which was written by Pradeep that is Dur Hato Dunya Walo Hindustan Hamara Hai. Now, um, the first uh, Indian film to gain international recognition was Chetan Anand's debut film, Nicha Nagar, and it shared the Grand Prix du Festival International du Film for the best picture. The film was written by K. Abbas, the great um, social commentator, the, you know, writer with a very strong sense of social purpose, and he was one of the it was uh, one of the first attempts in social realism in Indian cinema, almost along the lines of we have been talking about the Ita Italian neo-realistic cinema. So Nietzsche Nagar is quite metaphorical. It also uses expressionistic te uh, techniques. We have been talking about expressionism at length in this course, and Nietzsche Nagar. Um, quite literally is the lower city. So, on the upper sides you have the very rich people and the lower side you have the poor people. So, it is the binary between the two social classes. This film starred Umanan, Rafiq Ahmad and Zohra Sahagal and also introduced Kamini Kaushal who became a major Hindi film star. The film was also loosely inspired, it was an inspired version of Maxim Gorky's work Lower Depths and very significantly it marked the debut of the sitar maestro Ravi Shankar, Pandit Ravi Shankar as a music composer. This was also the uh, late 40s and early 50s was also the time when India started hosting international film festivals. The first international film festival of India was hosted in Bombay, Madras and Calcutta. It was called Madras those days by the films division in 1952. Mehboob Khan's epic film Mother India was nominated for the Oscars in the category of best foreign language film in 1958. Some of the other great films of this time are Mehal Andaz and Beju Bhavra. I am going to end this lecture today at this point and would strongly urge you to watch Mehal, Andaz and Beju Bhavra and then in our next class we will continue with the history of Hindi cinema that will be the second part of this lecture. Thank you very much.